Okay, uh, Walter, just a quick video just to show progress on this, on the shaper. So, um, I was so happy to hear about you getting your, um, uh, your base uh, ground. So that's a big step forward, believe me. Um, I'm going to pass in front of the camera here. There's no good place to set this up, so I'm going to try to zoom in a couple times and fool around with it here a little bit. So just to give you the general idea of what's going on. What I've been doing, as you know, is I've been scraping. So the, and as you know, the base is steel, not cast iron. So uh, it's kind of a bear to get scraped in and it was a long ways out. I don't, I didn't even check it with a feeler gauge, but <laughs> I didn't want to know. I just knew it was a lot of work to try to get it scraped in. So I've got it pretty flat uh, right now. I've got uh, one little low spot right here uh, that's, you know, it's not going to affect anything. I just quit working on it because it's, you know, I, I got tired of it. Um, I got, I got the, uh, the, the cross slide scraped in. The bed here is all scraped in. And the underside of the um, carriage is scraped in to match the cross slide. So... It, everything at this point, you know, I'm not counting points, um, but it, 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 it's pretty good. And the, the um, what do I want to say, everything is flat and parallel. That's the main thing I'm concerned about uh, right now. And there was a big discrepancy in the RAM. Uh, Actually, one side, if, if, you, if you call one side zero, zero, the other side was zero with six thousandths off at the back. So it wouldn't, it wouldn't actually slide up and down the, the carriage correctly um, without binding uh, once the jibs were tightened up. So that was a little bit of work, but I, that had, I had to scrape that anyway because that had uh, some milling, uh, some chatter marks in it, and stuff like that. So that it's it's all nice now. Uh, it's all um, uh, symmetrical. The two the two dovetails are parallel with each other, and um, I scraped the underside of the ram to match the, um, and I also scraped the top of the carriage. So that's all done, and everything. Also, I scraped the bottom of the cross slide, the base here, I, or where it sits on the base, that's all scraped in too. So everything's pretty close, everything's pretty parallel. I, I won't say it's perfect, so, but, um, and I'm not even sure it's good enough, but, but it's a step in the right direction. So that's where I'm at on the scraping. Um, this morning, this morning I put the unit back together. Um, I had it all apart. And I don't know, you probably can't see it on this, but um, I milled a big section out of the, the bottom of the base so I could bolt the cross slide onto the base. So that's all done. Um, I, got, I got two studs threaded into the cross slide. They go through two holes in the, in the base unit and then the, there's kind of a low profile nut under here. Uh, this will come apart without actually having to get under there. There's room to take the nut off. And I just, I didn't want to mill any more steel off of this than I needed to because it's, it's a lot of work. It, it took me a few hours just to mill, the, mill this section off of here. So, um, so that's done. You know, all little things that need to be done. Um, I saw this morning after putting it back together, and getting the jibs adjusted a little bit so I could move the ram back and forth. I wanted to see and how far out of alignment it is at this point because there may be some more scraping work that needs to be done. Now this is not a very um, uh, accurate uh, 
dial indicator. It, it's a, it's a hundred um, thousandths. Uh, so you know it's not real accurate, but you know it's it's good enough, and it's got a long reach. So um, I just I set the Noga on top of the RAM, kind of centered here. So actually, I'm not going to move the RAM beyond uh, the Noga is going to stay above the above the carriage. So so there's I mean I don't know. There's probably some little play in these jibs, but not much. It's, they're, they feel pretty tight, actually. So anyway, um, that's what I did. I set a vise on here because this vise is, I don't know how accurate it is, but it is ground on all, all sides. So I can use it to, because if I run the dial indicator on the base, um, and that's what I did to begin with, you're going to see the fluctuations in the scraping. So they're, they're not much, it, you know, tenths of a thousandths, but still, you know, this way it's a little more realistic. So I set the vise on here to, and set the dial indicator on the vise. And um, so I'm, I'm going to show you that actually it's in, in the, the vise is three inches, I think. So in three inches, um, it doesn't move. It stays pretty much at zero. I had to, um, I had to, uh, because of the scraping, uh, I had to adjust this eccentric on this end, this bushing. Um, it, it was working just fine in the location that I originally had it in, but when I put the dial indicator on here, um, it was moving it was moving up and down, it was moving the dial indicator up and down a couple thousands. So maybe not quite, but somewhere thereabouts, and it shouldn't be moving at all. So I just loosened this eccentric and let it find its own location. So actually it's it's working pretty good. It's I, I won't say it's as smooth as I like, but it's pretty smooth. And I realized also that um, there's supposed to be when this was originally a cast unit down here, this base, so there was originally supposed to be uh, three hold downs here. So uh, I, I think I'll go underneath and mill out a recess and, and um, put three hold downs in, in those locations because it, it, it has to be. Um, as heavy as this thing is, and believe me, I can't even pick it up at this point. This thing, this thing weighs more than I can handle. But even if it's 50, 60, 70 pounds, whatever it is, uh, it's not enough. Um, so when you start pulling that handle, um, it, it's, it's going to move. Even, even the crank here will, will cause it to move. So it's, it's not perfect. Anyway, so that's, that's kind of where I'm at. Um, the next step is going to be, I'm thinking the next step is going to be the um, the handle. So uh, I, ha I have a I have a drawing of the original handle with all the exact dimensions on it. So what I've done is taken that and converted it uh, by 0.8 uh, just so I scaled it down just a little bit to fit this shaper. And um, so I'm trying to decide from the photographs exactly how big that that handle or that bar should be and uh, so I, I'm trying to figure out where to start maybe maybe I'm going to start with a half by inch and a quarter piece of flat stock a uh, couple feet long and then we'll go from there but um, I'm going to do some milling on it and but I can't make it look like the original but I'm going to do the best I can and the main thing is I get it the right size so it works and, and the little arm over here the right size so that all works. So that's going to be the next step. I'm, I'm, um, this front unit here, um, I have, I've, I've milled all the parts for that, wherever they're at. I don't know where I put them now, but, uh, but somewhere around here I, um, I have all the parts for that. <laughs> Funny. I don't know where I where I set them now. Oh, here they are. They're right here. Okay, so I've got
So I've got I've got this part um, that that and I don't know if I can't get it on there right now. That it sits on yeah. It's so it, I've, this part's all done. Dovetails are milled, and um, but it it needs to get mounted. And then the um, the unit the cla the, the clapper and the unit that holds the clapper. Um, is here also so that's those those units uh, they need more work done on them but basically they're roughed out so um, I'm going to do some more work on those and and get those into into uh, installed so that's that's going to be the last step I've got a I've got a dial I've got a lead screw I've got all that stuff already for the front unit so that's that's coming that'll be the end that the the handle is going to be next so anyway um, I'm going to crank this back and forth and I'm going to move the ram so you can see what's going on with the dial indicator and I'm like I say I'm not going to move it very far I'm just going to move it a little ways so let me let me see if I can zoom in here so the dial indicator still shows I don't know Maybe right there, you can see. So anyway, I'm going to crank this thing. You can't see my hand, but I'm going to crank this thing from side to side. Um, and it probably is going to move a little bit, but I don't think too far. Let me get over here to one side and zero. The, let me, I can zero the meter here with the, the uh, adjustment on the Noga base. It's right on zero the way I'm looking at it. I don't know how how it shows up on the video. So I'm going to crank this over to the other side. So that's three inches. So not perfect, probably. So it moved. It might have moved a half a thousandth in three inches. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. And then this top of this vise is, um, let's see what the top of this vise is. Top of the vise is about um, two and a half inches or something. So I've got the, I've got the uh, ram all the way back. So the dovetail is flush with the front of the, with the carriage. So I'm going to move the ram forward. And of course it's going to hit a, there's a ridge in here, so it's going to hit that. So, and I don't want to, so there we go. So that's about, that moved about one thousandth in two and a half inches. So it's not perfect. And I don't know, I, this is pretty, the ram's pretty sturdy. You know, I can, I can't seem to, I've got the jib tight enough that it, that it doesn't move around so that 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 one thousandth is I guess you know what I would need to do is try to scrape the bottom of this this unit this um, cross slide unit a little bit more or something to try to accommodate that of course that's a pretty small shim I mean I could shim it one thousandths I guess not sure what that would be. I don't even think a piece of cigarette paper would do that. But maybe I'm worried about too much here. But I'm trying to get this as you know aligned as accurate as possible. So hopefully you know. And I'm not sure. Um, well, you know, this vice is going to this this vice sitting here is too high. So. The, the vice that I origin that I put on here will be you know a little bit lower profile than this I think but anyway so anyway that hopefully that tells you where I'm at and um, I don't know what else I can show you here I think that's kind of it but um, that's uh, I just wanted to let you know where I was at what progress I'm making. So all these little steps take some time. So they don't they don't happen instantly.
and um, and then when I get done like with the scraping and stuff I may I may have to do some more you know but I've got it pretty close I don't think whatever touch-up work I do won't be won't be a big deal but I still got a long way to go um, so it's but it I, I am making progress so I was a little bit concerned about this all running through after scraping it but evidently it's it's not far off this I had to move this eccentric about 45 degrees no actually I had to move it about maybe about 90 degrees actually so but um, now you know it was kind of galloping here but now it's running pretty smooth not not perfect but it's running pretty smooth so anyway that's where I'm at so I'll post this video so you know I'm anxious to see yours I guess you've got the top the top all ground in I you sent me a picture of that and that looks great you know I'm that's a a lot better solution than what I what I did um, all the scraping on the steel base was a little bit of a work you know and you know having it ground would have been uh, a much better solution so anyway but this worked and I'm happy with it and it's done so so we're we're good there I'm assuming that, that you know my my bottom portion down here these is is uh, the bottom of the cross slide that's all one piece but I know yours is going to be um, some bar stock that you're going to fit to the to your cross slide so I'm assuming that's probably going to be your next step and I don't know if you're going to use uh, steel or cast iron for that um, I'm I'm going to use steel for this for this um, uh, the arm the handle I'm going to use steel for that I don't see any sense in using cast iron for that and also it's a lot less expensive to buy a piece of steel so um, and then and then it's got a turned handle on the end of that arm and I guess what I'll do is uh, make that and and slot it or something and weld it to the end of the the um, the arm itself that's the way I'll probably handle that and I'm thinking that I'll do some milling on the arm um, it's got some raised sections where the bolts go through in these in these sections so I'm gonna uh, maybe mill those so that actually it'll look sort of like the top of the ram looks right now it has a ray has a raised section there so uh, maybe I'll buy a thick enough piece for the arm to to accommodate uh, doing that and um, it, it, it shouldn't be a lot of work maybe only a sixteenth of an inch to to mill off um, on both sides so let's say I start with a piece of half inch material I'll end up with a piece of 3 8 flat stock in the end with the two 16th inch raised sections something to that something to that effect anyway that's where I'm at so I'll I'll call off now and, and post this video and um, uh, I'll get back with you later okay have a good day bye bye